All right, we're talking mindful eating with Demi Mateos. Welcome, Demi. Hi, Linda. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right. So, what's your idea of mindful eating? Uh, well, mindful eating is just really just thinking before and just feeling everything in your body to see are you really hungry? Are you really thirsty? You know, trying to figure out what your gut is telling you. Um, I was a little off the last few months and I'm back in full mindful eating again. And I don't know what pulled me off, but I kind of thought I just, fi I figured it out finally. It had to do with um, something that was underlying through my parents, um, uh, both passed away, my dad in April and my mom in June. And I didn't realize that I was actually going into my emotional state. And I just figured that out. So it's kind of um, amazing to, to be able to say that and feel it and understand it and know now for the next year what I will actually be remem remembering and focusing on is mindful eating, especially around those times of the year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it wasn't this year. You lost your mom when you were 15. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And how old were you when you lost your dad? Oh, I believe I was 27. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a lot. Hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah. And so your mom's memorial was coming up and there were a lot of things, emotional things still coming up for you to be released. And you did that. And, um, and then you found that there was actually stuff to be released um, that had more to do with your dad than your mom. Because last year your cookbook was um, more wrapped around your mom's life and losing her. And then this up and coming cookbook is going to be more around your dad. So it was interesting how that played out as well, right? Right, right. Yeah, exactly. And um, it's, a, it's about letting go of a lot of feelings and coming into my body fully and um, understanding what my body's telling me uh, and not ignoring it. Yeah. Yeah, right. And I have found that in my work too that um, a certain date or a certain month, you know, um, people will do okay and then all of a sudden they just go, and yeah. So being aware that the time of year has a huge impact on our health and our mental health. And then digging a little bit deeper, like, okay, what is going on here, right? And and taking a look at past history and what happened around this time of year is super important. Very cool. Right, yeah. yeah. So. Okay, so mindful eating. Is mindful eating about avoiding medication? So kind of like, you know, your food is more the medicine and how to use the food as medicine and get off of medicine because you have had an amazing journey of getting off of um, almost fully off of 10 meds. I think you're still right. ditching around with a diabetes med yes. that your doctor's like, yeah, you can get off. And you're like, no, like I'm balancing out my body. I don't want the yeast infections. I, you know, I'm not just going to jump right off. So it's, it's, it's really fun <laughs> hearing your, um, conversate over you know like you share your conversations with your doctors sometimes it's, it's fun to hear those as well you usually slip those in books too right yeah yeah okay. and avoiding medication and what you just said actually is really important um making food your medicine is even more important mm -hmm. uh you know and i do that a lot in the foods that i actually suggest and some of the changes in my healthier greek recipes but many of the recipes that i put in my books are beneficial to your gut health they're beneficial for keeping your sugars steady so a lot of the things in my books um, are geared towards you getting healthier and that's why the name of the book is called the healthier greek <laughs> i love it yeah. all right so tell us a little bit more about avoiding medication so and this is a great time for me to talk about this too because i was just pulled off of all my meds back in november of 2018. okay it was i didn't know this but my doctor wanted to kind of see how my body would do without any medication okay and so she told me to get off of everything so i did and um, i got off all the medication and then things started going a little crazy for my body 
it took a little while. It started to straighten out, but the numbers were still high in the morning and we didn't know why. So I went and found a specialist, endocrinologist, and I've been seeing this general, this um, specialist since like the middle of January. Um, and we've been working on why my numbers are high in the morning still. Um, and uh, every so often they spike when I eat certain things. Mm. And so I was checking myself out and I was, of course, I was putting myself as the little um, project and uh, I wanted to see too. I wanted to see why my body's not breaking down fruit. And for instance, if I have an apple, an apple, which is the lowest on the scale of, um, you know, your sugar getting affected right away. When I eat a whole apple, my sugar goes really high and then it goes to a normal um, level. Okay. Uh, so, but if I have any kind of um, bread, it'll, it'll go high also, but it's a little higher than the fruit. Um, so what I've found is that if I have a certain amount of fruit, uh, maybe a half of an apple, it won't go as high. So you, there's a way of eating these foods and um, not spiking. Mm. The thing is that you have to be aware of it. And um, I could actually tell you that because I have a little, it's called the Freestyle Libre. It's, I can't show it to you right now, but it's on my arm. And it's a little sensor that actually tells you throughout the whole day, throughout the night, what your sugar levels are and what what caused it to go up because you kind of know when to what time you ate and what time you didn't. Yeah, so I was struggling for the last three months trying to figure out what was you know spiking, what wasn't spiking. So I kind of brought some things that I don't normally eat back into my diet, which has caused some issues with my sugar. But yesterday, my doctor, um, he gave me a big congrats and he says to me, Demi, I want to just tell you that your diet, when it's on point, everything is fine. But as soon as you eat, and he said, you know, even when you eat and it spikes a little because I, just like me, I'm a norm, I have normal blood sugars. When I eat something, it goes up a little. That's what's supposed to happen. Then he was explaining to me that what happens is, because I don't want to take medication and I avoid it as much as I can. But I've tried every single thing to stay away from this medicine. And right now, right this moment, my body's not ready to give it up yet. Yep. And that's fine. And I wasn't okay with it, but yesterday I became okay with it because he explained to me that the more you stress your pancreas out and the more you stress out your heart because of your spiking, Mm -hmm. what happens is you're causing other issues to your body. Your kidneys start to suffer. They get a little tired. You know, when you overwork all these organs, they kind of get more tired. It's like, yeah. Yeah. So he explained to me that he wants me to stay on the medicine for a little while and that's fine. It wasn't okay a few days ago, but I'm okay with it now because <laughs> I tried my best and that's what all, that's all I'm asking is everybody, to try your best, try to help your body as much as you can at the mo the moment you're in right now. That's yep. all. I'm asking. Don't just yep. go and say yes, doctor. I'll take that because then you're really not helping yourself and you're not understanding what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do your best, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Do your best. Yeah. Very cool. All right. So what else? Um, as far as like stories on avoiding medication what's another story that pops for you hmm. well here i could tell you about my husband um i've been trying to get him off of diabetes medication and um again this comes up he's not willing to give up certain things in his diet so if he's not willing to give those up then he has to take the medication mm -hmm. and that's exactly where he's at yeah and he's, he's not, okay with you talking about his health. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's fine with it. Yeah. yeah. Your partner's in crime, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so when you got out of the hospital, you ended up being on like 10 medications, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you've slowly gotten yourself off of 
of all but this one diabetes medicine. I mean, you got off of everything and then back on. So just the diabetes one though. So, right. so how did that go? Like, what were all the things that they were medicating you for? And then how did you get off and which okay. ones were you off first? Well, I was on cholesterol medication. I was on anxiety me medication. I was on um, sleeping pills because I couldn't sleep throughout the night. Um, I was on um, blood pressure medication and um, diabetes medication. I'm trying to think what else. There were so many. COPD, did they put you on anything? Oh, I was COPD? taking an inhaler for COPD, yes. On inhaler, okay. And, yeah. and um, I believe, yeah, I believe that's everything. Yeah. And so um, it started out with getting off the anxiety medication. That was the hardest one, I think. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one and the diabetes, of course. Um, the anxiety one was very hard to get off. I went through big crying spells. It was almost like suicidal to wow. try those things. Yeah. Really? It was How the, old were you, Demi, at the time? Oh, that was about nine years ago. So. Okay, so you were kind of in that perimenopause stage as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah. I was about 41, 42. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that one was the hardest one. And then, you know, as I started getting better, um, the one for sleep, as I got healthier, um, the one for sleep, I didn't need anymore. And I started sleeping. It was about, about like five or six hours a night. So I was, I was okay with that. Um, I, I couldn't sleep three hours in the beginning, you know? Yeah. And I'd be up most of the night, you know? Wow. Yeah, it was it was rough. Yeah. Um, yeah. But later you found out that you actually needed a sleep apnea machine. So yeah, exactly. that's on the horizon. Now, anyways, back to getting off. So then what was the next? Then cholesterol medicine. And I was getting so excited just getting rid of each medicine. I was like, all right, check. We got the next one. Let's go. Yeah, right? And yeah, about two... Maybe two years ago, I finally got off of um, my blood pressure medication. And that was kind of exciting uh, because I remember my blood pressure always being over like 140, over like 90 something. And it was scary sometimes because I was on the medicine. So um, when I finally did get off, I was really excited about that. And then you know, I'm on top of it. I check it every so often. It does go a little up if I have something a little higher in salt, but I make sure, again, water is very important for blood pressure um, to, to keep it stabilized, so make sure you're hydrating yourself. Mm -hmm. um, what so else? Demi, so at its worst, your blood pressure was? Oh, 170, 168, over 130, 140. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, it and numbers. Yeah. at its best, it's been? 110 over 70 or 68. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And what is it recently? And yesterday it was 119 over 70. So I was excited about that. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Yeah. And so what was the next one? Um, so uh, I think that was, uh, then of course the COPD medicine. I was on and off that. I didn't take it much. I found out that for COPD, walking and exercising helps even better than medication. Okay. And I always used to say, I don't think I have COPD. And I kept telling the doctors, are you sure I have COPD? And they were like, yeah. I said, I don't really think so. And um, this, past, uh, this past Christmas, I was diagnosed with um, sleep apnea, which I did not know I had. And um, when I went in for a test to the pulmonary doctor, the specialist, he said, you don't have COPD. There you have it. And real quick, <laughs> real quick in a backup there is <clears throat> your uncle, Mike, uh, when he was hospitalized and you were wondering about the fat on his belly, if that was affecting oh, his yeah, that was cousin Tell Mike. that story quick. Yeah. So cousin Mike was in the hospital um, a few years ago before his, um, he passed away. And he had a lot of pulmonary issues and lung problems. And I asked one of the specialists when I walked outside of the 
room, I said, is it possible that fat can be pushing up against his lungs and, you know, causing him to have problems with his breathing? And he said, definitely. And I said to myself, wow, aha moment. <laughs> I said, that's what's going on with you, girl. And yeah. I kind of knew, I kind of knew. And again, you know, that's all about being mindful in your body and just listening to what's going on. And, you know, it takes a little time and practice. And if you keep doing it, you know, not that you're going to ever not go off of, you know, being mindful, but it's really good to be inside your body and feel everything and understand what's going on. Yeah. yeah. So cool. Yeah. I love it. And yes, take in your doctor's information. Absolutely. Have those conversations. Absolutely. And you know, the doctors don't know everything, right? So you get it figured out, bring it back to your doctor, get it figured out, bring it back to your doctor. It's very cool. And they have better resources now too. And you know, I'm not going to like stuff. And what I found with my doctors, they love that I ask questions. They love that I challenge them. They learn from me sometimes, well, most of the time. And it's really nice. <laughs> yeah. It's really nice to just go back and forth with a doctor because everybody's just like, oh, you know, they're doctors. But they really don't know everything. I literally I had a doctor tell me this two months ago. He said, you know, you probably know more than I do. And I said, I probably do, but I'm pretty sure you know some things I don't know. Oh, and, yeah, absolutely. And, they're great. Yeah. yeah. So I totally like to challenge every doctor of mine. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So detoxing the past. Whoa. That's just like open up a can of worms. <laughs> yep. That's like you. You've done lots and lots of detoxing, um, clutter from your home, you know, which I had stuff to do with the past as well. Oh my gosh, like where do we begin? So if there's only one thing that you would talk about as far as like detoxing from the past, we could start with that. What would that be that you want us to be sure and know to take a look at? Well, you know, a lot of things that come up for me and for a lot of my clients is childhood. And childhood memories um, that, you know, are just stuck right in there in their heads and, you know, yeah. kind of doesn't push them to go forward or allow them to go forward because they're still stuck right back there where they were like six years old, where their parent was saying, you know, you're not enough. Oh, you didn't yeah. do well. And that's, that's one deal, like one big deal that has been coming up for me and a lot of my clients, and I, I love helping them actually discover that. And sometimes it's hard for people to go back to that. I remember when I was first told, you know, you need to look into your childhood and forgive your child. And I, I, it was really hard for me to do. Yeah. I couldn't think of, you know, how do I let go of that, all that pain and, yeah. and grief and just hurt um, you know, from inside, because you're a kid at that time, you're not, you're still developing. And there's just so much yeah. hurt going from inside that how do you let go of that? And yeah, and it's not just what parents have said, you know, we make conclusions in our own minds about certain things with the limited knowledge that we have as children. Oh, I must be, you know, like the worst one is like, um, sexual predator in a child's life and it, it's and it's so confusing because it feels good or whatever and and it's it's yeah they just they, they internalize it it's like oh this must be me and that one is like a really toughie too so detoxing the past is huge <laughs> yeah cool all right so what else about detoxing the past that you want people to be sure and understand well, you know, it doesn't mean when you detox that you let go of everything, every memory. You know, um, I think that it could always be there. Mm -hmm. But um, I think you need to just remember that you have a life and that you want to live it to your fullest. And if things are holding you back from the past for you to move forward and become the best you you want to be or be mm -hmm. for your family or your friends or whoever you're with, I mean, you kind of have to just let it go of that, all the negative part of it and, right. and think of all the positives that you got from it. 
-hmm. And that will actually bring you where you need to go. Right. And that doesn't mean do that on your own necessarily. Get help. You know, I mean, you know, I take people through releases and then a neutralization and, and it just becomes another page in your history book and no longer has that emotional hold on you. So, yeah. yeah and, I, and I agree. And, I, you know, I don't, I, I, right now I'm seeing a therapist every week just to unload um, yeah. to someone. And you know right. what? That doesn't mean that, you know, um, it's a negative thing. Mm-hmm. It's such a positive thing. And in fact, when I go to her, I think I'm just telling her everything that's so good. Everything's going great. And, you know, when there is something like a little, you know, pebble in the road, I could actually say that too. So yeah. it actually helps. Yeah. 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 I love it. Yeah. You just don't want to go to someone where you're, where you just keep repeating your same old story and you never get right. out of your story. And, you know, that's not going to move you forward either. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. And okay. you and you helped me a lot with those things, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and sometimes I don't even want to face them, but it's it's such a great feeling when you do. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I love that. And again, that brings me back to my mirror stories is looking at yourself in the mirror and just like, let's, let's do this. We got this, you know, and yeah. yeah. Well, it, the fun thing for me as a book coach, because I'm also a money mindset and business coach, is somebody really is excited about doing their book and all of a sudden they can't go forward and it's because they've got somebody to release and we just go do that, like bam, 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 it's, it doesn't take long and then bam, we're just like right back into the book again and that's their carrot, right? That's what they want to be doing, even if someone doesn't want to release um or talk even talk about something in their past it it's in the way and it just becomes so blatantly in the way and they're like they choose the book over you know whatever the issue was or the person that they were having an issue with so it's really beautiful i love the the book process well i love the book process with you And I, I, I think that you should actually be called the soul coach. Hey, but who knows? <laughs> come up before. Yeah. Cause the, yeah. the thing we yeah. get to your soul out of your pain body, out of your ego. <laughs> it's a very healthy way to um, look at one's past. Yes, I agree. Thank you for recognizing that too. <laughs> very cool. All right. And so one of the things, I mean, you found your mom when, you were only 15 years old and, and then your dad kind of like freaked out. And so you were the one leading, you know, and being the adult when you didn't really need to be the adult. Right. You yeah. Know? So yeah. That's it was, huge. It was, yeah. It was rough. It was, um, mm-hmm. you know, June 1st and I was 15 and a half. I, my birthday was coming up. My 16th birthday was coming up in November. And that morning, just waking up, um, I literally had to take on the role as the adult in the room and called for the emergency um, to come and pick up my mom. And then I had to watch her go out in a, you know, in a body bag, which was really hard. And then I ended up becoming my little brothers who was 13 is I kind of just like his protector. That's how I felt. And that's just how I felt. Um, It's not, you know, what everybody may think, but that's how I felt. Right. And I took on that role inside myself without telling anybody or asking for permission to do it, or I just did it. And yeah. um, it was rough. And I just realized that I did that. And I didn't understand that I had did that, but I took on a role that I shouldn't have taken on. And um, yeah, yeah, that was huge. And then on top of it, as you know, a almost 50 year old, you're like looking at all this clutter in your house and, and a lot of it was your mom's stuff. So right. just your mom's stuff around was right. holding you back from releasing your past. Not that you had to get rid of all of it. It was yeah. just another, you know, thing well, you, that you went through you know, and you actually hired a declutter person to help you. Right. And that was so fabulous how you handled all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I did hire a declutter person and it was a rough, like, again, it went, it's a start again. Right. Mm-hmm. And it was rough for me to start with that because I remember, but she was very gentle. Thank God. And when we did go through the things that I was saving from my mom, 
you know, um, she would ask me certain questions, you know, what comes up for you? Are you going to use it? Yeah. Um, you no, know, is this is your mom's memory, but you have it sitting in the closet for over 20 or 30 years and you're right. not using it. So what good is it? And so she kind of made me see that, you know, yeah, you're right. I need to start using these things or I need to give them to somebody that will use them. There you go. Yeah. Move her memory out of your house to, to yeah. touch other people's lives. That's fairly beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And she also noticed that you, you know, kind of in, because you said you were raised in chaos. There was disorganization all over your computer too. So she got you like <laughs> detoxing your computer and making um, organizations and stuff there. So that's right. so beautiful. I, I love how that all went down. Yeah. And then dealing with emotions. Whoa, right? <laughs> I teach this one. My hand is my helper. I know you use that now. Get that logic over in those emotional pictures that you're running over on the right side. How about you? What do you teach for dealing with emotions? Well, kind of just being aware of your emotions and where they're stemming from is a huge deal for my clients. Um, you know, getting them to actually even see that there are emotions there. In fact, I have a few clients right now that I'm working with and I see that, you know, from my view, you know, yeah. when, when you come out of it, you could actually see what's going on and, you know, I'm really good and intuitive on catching those things and I'm yeah, very... taking notes with those things. But that's, that's the huge thing. When you finally get your client to be aware of it mm -hmm. and, and have a ha aha moment of their own so yeah. that they can see, wow, you know, that's where my issue was stemming from. And, you know, mm -hmm. that's when you start seeing like the great stuff coming in and growth and, and, and change and change in habits and wanting to change because you finally see why you were doing those certain things. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's yeah. a huge, yeah, that's a huge. And thing. that's what really sets you apart from other health coaches. You also have a, a behaviors background and you're super intuitive and you, you can really tap into what is like really not quite right with this situation. And it, you know, you, you know what to do, like you recognize what's wrong, you know exactly what to do and you're very gentle in um, helping like your clutter declutter lady was for you and you really appreciated that mm -hmm. so yeah you you're you're very tapped in very tuned in um, you've worked with kids with special needs you know how not to set off a, a client <laughs> if you will and how to be gentle and how to be super encouraging like you have uh, referred to yourself as cheerleader before, right? And it's yeah. like, you did it, you did it, you did it. And you do that for yourself too, even with like you're drinking of the water, right? So I love that, um, you, the, that piece of uniqueness that you bring to your health coaching business. So thank you for that, Demi. I love the work that you're doing in the world. Is there anything else you'd like to add as far as like, um, helping people deal with their emotions, empowering them to deal with their emotions? Well, you know, emotions are in and out. You know, mm -hmm. you may deal with something today and think it's all finished. And yeah. you're it, but it's like an onion. Mm -hmm. You pull back another layer and you're still working on that same thing. And, yeah. you know, especially my mom's grief is, has been a big deal for me. I kind of thought it was done and, Every year it's like, oh, yeah, I'm good. And then, you know, it comes around and it's not good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I lost my father to suicide when I was just barely 17. And, yeah, I tell you, especially when your brain isn't fully developed, you know, because it doesn't really fully develop till age 25. And then two years later, you lost your dad. So you, you didn't have a good foundation in walking into, like, losing your father on top of it, right? right. So lots of swirly emotions. and. Um, and not a not a good foundation for handling them and and I had a great foundation and still it was just a nightmare and the um the I just say grief comes in waves and you, you never know and and we can go <clears throat> when it comes like oh no I don't want to feel this way anymore or we can just puff up stay open and like here it comes again okay I'm just gonna let it flow through you know even more this time does that right. make sense yeah, it totally makes sense. And that, in fact, that's how health comes along too. 
Um, you know, you could keep working on your health and your immune system. And what I've found is, you know, health goes, you know, you're, you're getting healthy, you're getting healthy, you're dropping medicine and boom, suddenly you're not feeling well again. And it's like a detox. Your body is constantly detoxing layers and layers of unhealthiness that yep. went through how many years and then suddenly you're feeling great again. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it is. All right, madam, very nice. And uh, we'll put the details on how to get a hold of you into the description of the YouTube video here. Thank you so much, Demi. You're welcome. It's always a pleasure. Bye bye. Bye.